church in Baltimore, Maryland. Can we get to the word? Is that all right? Is that all right? Enough with the niceties. Can we? I want to understand that the theme for today is never would have made it. I think that is an appropriate theme for the graduates and for all of us here today. We've tried to prepare a message that would be appropriate in that theme. Turn with me to your scripture text. And may I have the cordless mic? Is that all right? Can I have that? Please. Letter of Philippians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. Very familiar and common passage of scripture you want to revisit today. That is the letter of Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. I'll be reading from the authorized translation of the Holy Scriptures. If you have a different version, please follow closely as I read aloud. The Word of God says, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking, not that I speak in respect of what? For I have learned in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. Verse 12, I know both how to be abased, I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry to bound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The message for today is simply entitled, The I Can Do Deception. The I Can Do deception. Let us seek the Lord's face one more time. Nothing in our hands we bring. Simply and only to the cross of Calvary do we cling. Pass us not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear our humble cry. You've already occupied this space. So please do not pass us by. But continue to Pour out your light, your love, your power, your peace for your name's honor. Glory and praise we beg, we plead, and we thank you in advance. Let the people of God say amen and amen. The word of God, the Bible, is a very profitable tool for us as practicing Christians to follow after the Lord's will. As a discipline, many of us choose to memorize favorite texts that have a special place in our hearts. Uh, certain texts that speak to a specific situation that we have or are going through. Uh, for someone, the comfort of Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want speaks to their particular need. For another, it is the assurance of Romans 8, 28 that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, the one who is called according to his purpose replenishes that individual soul. And yet for someone else it is the simplicity of the gospel found in john 3 verse 16 for god uh, so loved the entire world that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life that text soothed 
his or her heart. But of all the texts in the Bible, of all the many, many texts, almost a million words found in Scripture, the one that is most probably used and quoted the most in order to motivate someone in accomplishing a particular task or goal or objective is none other than our scripture text, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things mm. <laughs> through Christ which strengtheneth me. I, I snicker a little bit because a movie star receiving an Academy Award <laughs> may sometimes quote <laughs> Philippians 4.13 in their acceptance speech. An athlete receiving a gold medal from the Olympics will give some variation of the fact that a higher power, if you please, has given him or her strength to win this particular race, even a recording artist. Uh, while receiving a Grammy for producing an album which actually blasphemes the Lord's name, will sometimes say, first, I want to give thanks to God for giving me the talents and gifts so I can win this award. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Uh, apparently, giving this consistency in the use of this text, the key to acquiring the things you want the key to acquiring and opening the box of whatever it is you're trying to achieve in life must be to simply recall a famous passage of scripture, Philippians 4.13. Uh, so when attempting to find a husband, you don't got to do anything. You just have to quote, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, which strengtheneth me when attempting to find a wife. Same thing. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me when attempting to buy that new car, when attempting to buy that house. No, no need for research. I can do all things when attempting to get that million dollar raise. When attempting to fix a particular situation, <laughs> all we have to do is say, uh, I can do <laughs> all things. Uh, you're not with me this afternoon. Even, 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 I would say, even secular institutions of learning at their graduation exercises of all levels will declare to its graduates in some form or fashion that if they believe and have faith in themselves or in a higher power, they can do all things and achieve their highest goals. These institutions feed this mindset uh, to their enrolled students from the orientation seminar up until the commencement address. Hence, my brothers and sisters, while it is essential to learn certain core subject matters in order to graduate from earthly schools, I would dare suggest that it is even more essential to unlearn certain core subject matters in order to graduate from the school of Jesus Christ, which is not of this world. Today, graduates and everyone here, today is a crash course in that unlearning process. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me today? While the aforementioned uses of Philippians 4.13 are very inspirational, and they are, they are also unfortunately not doing justice to the text of Scripture. Uh, you see, by interpreting it outside of its original setting, we have actually abused the sacred word of God for the purpose of accomplishing our own selfish ambitions. 
for the desire to obtain possessions and actualize goals is not in the mind of the inspired apostle. Are oh, you not with me? Paul is not providing a license or a paradigm for us to acquire and execute all of our wants and desires using the name of Jesus as our crutch. As a matter of fact, I would dare suggest that Paul's authorial intent is to portray the exact opposite meaning. This text of scripture is a call to contentment and sufficiency in Christ's strength. Ah, uh, it is not about what I can do, but about being strong in what Christ has done already. For we never would have made it if it were not for him. We never could have made it. We never would be if it weren't not for our Lord and Savior. Now, 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 family, this does not mean that God will not provide us with a family or a house or graduates a job. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Nor does it mean that we uh, should not feel free to request these things from our loving Jehovah Jireh providing Lord and Savior. However, it does mean that we must not allow these attainments to become our strength. We must not allow our newly received certificate or diploma to become our stability. The problem we face when we read Philippians 4.13 is that we tend to focus our attention on the wrong half of the verse. <laughs> uh, we tend to talk about the first half extensively. I can do this. I can do that. I can attain this. Or I can obtain that. And then the second half is simply an afterthought. Through Christ which strengthens me becomes a support beam for us effectuating our own dreams and enterprises. You're not with me this afternoon. Therefore, in this secular mindset, a great role reversal takes place. All of a sudden, Christ lives for me instead of me living for him. Christ's power is there to serve my needs instead of me serving Christ's needs. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, this is in fact the I can do deception. And many of us in the church, in leadership, are drinking its cunning wine of beguilement and duplicity. Yeah. Many professed Christians are being led astray by the I can do deception because they believe in a prosperity gospel. Can we talk about it? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They believe in some type of gospel of prosperity. God is about to enlarge your territory. Uh, you just got to reach up and grab it. And pull it down. Oh, you, uh, you, oh, <laughs> oh maybe, maybe, maybe Pastor Brewer the first does not speak of things like this, but it's here. It's around, huh? Oh, 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 another one. You are the seed of Abraham and his blessings about to fall on you. Huh? Wow, wow, wow. It is true 
that the Bible declares that God's children are going to prosper. It's true. Never have I seen the righteous what? Or his seed begging bread, I will cause thee to rise upon the high places. Uh, the problem is this. The challenge, the opportunity is this. The Bible also declares that God's same children are going to suffer. That's what's not mentioned. Jesus says himself, they're going to kill me. And you are my servants. Are the servants greater than the master? Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must what? Take up your cross. Cross is not a pleasant thing. Are you seeing it, family? Huh? And follow me. That's also promised in scripture. It is important to remember this, that the ultimate prosperity we receive is not of this world. But bless the Lord, there is a city with 12 pearly gates. Somebody not with me. Uh, you may not be able to afford pearls down here, but you have 12 pearly gates. Uh, there is a city with 12 foundations of precious stones that you can't even repeat or pronounce. Uh, there is a city with walls of transparent jasper. There is a city with streets paved with gold. Success and riches takes place when God finally and ultimately overthrows sin and Satan, casting them into the lake of fire. But until Saints, Paul says we are living in between the times. So, mm, 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 what is promised isn't ultimately here yet. Now, now, mm, 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 the old man puts on a new, uh, 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 is born again. There's a new flesh that comes on, puts on the Holy Ghost. So what happens, you're no longer under the old age, which leads to death. But yet, we haven't achieved what's going to happen yet in its ultimate reality. We're in between. Which means this, graduates, you're going to prosper, yes, but you're going to suffer too. That's what, <laughs> that's what folk ain't going to tell you. Huh? That is the I can do deception. I'm sorry, it's not popular. But that's all right, it's the word. Somebody with me tonight, today. When we take a closer look at the passage, we find, <laughs> we find that, 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 that Paul is not thinking about prosperity. Enlarging his territory or Paul's not thinking about getting a better job. In fact, he is in jail, possibly on death row. Yeah. That is the reality of Paul's current situation. The believers in Philippi have sent him gifts in order to keep his spirits up. But ironically enough, Paul, despite the gloom and doom of his circumstance, is not discouraged. That's right. yes. uh, you didn't hear me. 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 Paul, despite the fact that he has a terminal disease, yeah. despite the fact that he lost his job, despite the fact that his child might be on drugs, outside of the uh, uh, you know, family, are you with me? Are you with me? Outside the fold of faith. Paul is not discouraged. Mm. <laughs> I thought somebody would be excited about that. Maybe not. Maybe not. For, 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 for his chains have not made his countenance downcast. For he has been in every situation. He's been rich. 
He's been poor. He's been well fed. He's been hungry. He's had much. He's had nothing. Consequently, Paul has learned to be content no matter what the circumstances. Do you know why? This is because the Apostle Paul recognizes that his strength does not come from his abilities. Uh, his strength does not come from what he has. And his strength does not come from what he can do. His strength does not come from his present circumstances. But in Philippians 4.13, Paul declares that Christ himself Christ himself, the strength of Jesus Christ, is in fact his strength. And Christ's power is in fact his power. And Christ's love is in fact his love. And what Christ is, is his own sufficiency. So bring it. I'm strong. Because Christ is strong. I'm not worried. I'm not afraid. Why? Because God is on the throne. Many of us, unfortunately, <laughs> have a hard time with this understanding. Do you know why? This is because our strength does come from our jobs. It doesn't come from the eternal employer. Nah, our strength does come from our mate. It doesn't come from the magnificent matchmaker. Our strength comes from our house, not from he who is the chief cornerstone. Our strength comes from our success, not from he who is the successful savior. This is why when we get fired or our spouse leaves us for our best friend or our house burns down or our success becomes a failure, we lose all hope in Christ because we stored up treasure in earthly vessels. But the world passes away. Mm. This is because we, 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 pastors too, <laughs> we, <laughs> leaders, okay, all right? We, we, this is because we, we, we never fully trusted Christ. Our confidence, some way, some way, our confidence in surely and surety was simply and only based in the gifts, not in the gift giver. It was based in the letters after our names. Not in the one whose name is above every name. So, so, mm. Something can happen in which we lose, we miss out. So when they are lost, we are lost too. Paul, gotta love Paul, gotta love Paul. Paul, the apostle Paul, wanted these believers to understand that they, along with himself and us here today, must be strong in Christ's strength alone. This is because everything else may be lost through the known, the promised trial and tribulation and persecution that we will and some of us are already going through. You see, whatever it is that I can do can just as easily be undone. All their gifts and things are transitory and temporary. Only Christ alone is eternal. Therefore, by being strong in him, his strength would always, always, 
always because he is the alpha and omega because he's from everlasting unto everlasting because his kingdom will have no end Christ's strength alone will always be available despite the circumstance as a matter of fact the I can do deception doesn't reveal the fact that the verb can do is not even found in the original Greek manuscripts. Not there. A more exact translation of the Holy Scriptures would be, I am strong for all things in the one who constantly infuses strength in me. I am strong for all things. Remember he just said, I've known how to be fed, hungry, rich, poor, much, nothing. He's saying, look, I'm strong for every situation. Why? Because I'm strong in the one who constantly, consistently, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, infuses strength in me. So bring it on, devil. Whatever you got, I'm strong in Jesus. All things. The reason why can do is not there. It's because Paul is proclaiming, it's not about what I can do. It's about the one that I'm connected to. Paul is exclaiming, it's not about what my hands can do. It's about the cross that my hands are cling to. Paul is saying that it's not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. Thus says the Lord. Why? For his strength is perfect, not mine. His strength is perfect, not I. He is the bomb in Gilead, not I. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, not I. But he is the good shepherd, not I. But he is the almighty, not I. But he is the rock, not I. But he is the anchor, not I. But he is the chief cornerstone, not I, but greater, greater, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. The reality is this, and I'm done. I can do nothing. heard me I we can do nothing don't matter what you think your hands can accomplish trust me you can do nothing That's what the I can do deception doesn't tell you. It gives you the false belief that somehow by 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 manipulating things or by 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 working things out, by hard work, and not saying these things don't are not are not important. But these things cannot be the source of your strength. We, you, all of us need to be strong in the one who constantly, consistently infuses his strength, his might, his discernment, his wisdom, his power, his omniscience, 
his love, his mercy, his grace. You know, all that is his. He owns the cattle. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's the great I am. He's the everlasting father. We are nothing. But despite how nothing we are, we can choose to be strong in he who is ruler over everything. Therefore, <laughs> you know, the Bible says, as many as receive him, to them gave he the authority to become what? Sons and daughters of God. Even in that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, but who were born of God himself. So, so, mm, as sons and daughters, what are we? We are heirs. We are heirs to everything that belongs to him. But, but, in order for us to realize it, we've got to be strong. Not in our strength. Not in our abilities. We've got to be strong in the one who constantly infuses strength in us. Therefore, like Paul, in order to graduate from the school of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter how many earthly schools you graduate. That's, that's, that's real. You know why? The world will pass away and everything in it, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever so you do what you can to graduate from here but you better make sure that when the roll is called up yeah, yeah. at the final graduation the graduation ceremony of the school of Jesus Christ we have to choose to be strong for all things in the one who constantly infuses strength in us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're done. We're done. What? I want you to listen. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. What, when we say be strong in the one, what does that mean practically? Being strong in God, bottom line means we have to be connected to him. It means that we have to take the opportunities we have to pray to him. Like you're connected to your books or to your class or to your teachers or to your classmates. You got to be connected to the one who's the source of every strength. We got to study his word. It's, it's the basics. It's the basics. We got to spend time reading his word. We got to spend time simply talking to him. That's how we become strong in the one who constantly infuses strength in us. So that's the decision that we need to make today, whether you're a graduate or not. The school of Jesus Christ has open enrollment. Are you not with me? There are no prerequisites. Somebody not with me today. Doesn't matter what you've done. Where sin abound, grace did much more. Open enrollment for the school of Jesus Christ. Open opportunity for graduation. 
but your homework, your assignments, your lessons is this. Make time in a day, a particular time. Your morning, seven o'clock, six o'clock. Your night person, 10 o'clock, prayer. It's your appointment with God, you and God. Boom, you wanna be strong in the one. Just like you have an appointment to make it to class on time. See, mm, see the correlation is perfect, family. You can't show up at class when you want. You're not gonna pass. How do we expect to graduate from the school of Jesus Christ if we play hooky on that school and time spent with him? So, so, mm, mm. time every day. And what you say, you know what, I'm gonna store up. I'm practicing for that final exam. Because you know what, mm -mm. the final exam is gonna be a battle between Christ and Satan, and you're thrust in it, you know that. It's called great controversy. And the only way, the only way, the only way that we'll be victorious is by the blood of the Lamb and by knowing Jesus Christ. You've got to store up that strength. So when the battle comes, bless the Lord, the strength of God will go through you. And conquer whatever situation the enemy brings before you. But you gotta make, you gotta attend class. You gotta study. Your, 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 your book, your book, your book, your textbook. You wanna know what it is? You wanna know what it is? It's the greatest selling book of all time. The Holy Bible. You get a translation that you can understand. If it's the authorized, bless the Lord. If it's a more modern one, bless the Lord. You spend time with your textbook. And you know who your teacher is? Jesus. Matter of fact, they called him teacher in scripture. So you have a professor. You have, you have, you have, you have your, you have your, 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 your textbook. And you make time every day to go to class in the school of Jesus Christ. You'll be strong, you'll be strong, you'll be strong. And then you'll be strong for all things in the one who will constantly infuse strength in you. You wanna make that decision? Open enrollment, you wanna join? Why don't you stand to your feet with me? I'm raising my hand because I want to be a part of the school of Jesus Christ. God bless you as you stand. God bless you. God bless you. Why don't you keep your eyes closed and bow your head because we have to extend an opportunity. Maybe there may be someone here. You want to join the school, but you might need some help. I don't know what that is. But God knows because God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. And you say, you know what? I need to get a, a tutor. <laughs> Bless the Lord. God's school has tutors too. The pastor, the elders of this church. They'll study with you. They'll pray with you. They'll create your outline, your course study. You're not with me. Your plan. So you can graduate from the greatest school in the universe, the school of Jesus Christ. You wanna do that? You need some help? We advise you to come down to the front. Just come down to the front. If you need someone, some help to come down, just raise your hand. We'll come and get you. But you gotta be willing to graduate, to enroll. You gotta be willing. There are professors of all kinds, tutors of all kinds in this church that can nurture you and guide you. And the great teacher, Jesus Christ, oh man, he's merciful, he's patient, he's kind, 
he'll take time out of his day. You know, he runs the entire universe. But he says, you know what? Call upon me and I will be there. So you can avoid the I can do deception. Where are you? Where are you? We're going to count down from seven. And then we'll invite the shepherd of this house of worship and this, this, this school building that's a part of the school of Jesus Christ to pray over this congregation. Where are you? Six. Five. Four. Come, come. We're praying for you. Come on. Three. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, when we are up, we are up because we are strengthened by our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. But even in the hard times, and those times will come, we are assured that you will not leave us. In fact, as the poem says, you're often carrying us through the hardest times because you're always there to strengthen us. Lord, I pray that we might be diligent students in your school. May we never forsake our studies. May we not procrastinate and think that at the last minute we can pass if we cram. There's no cramming in your school. Your word says we must die daily. We must be intentional every day in your word and in prayer. And we know, Lord, that it isn't the prayer. It isn't even the textbook that gives us the strength. We do those things so that we can know the one who strengthens us. Lord, may we commit our lives into your hand that you might do as you please. And if we abound, we praise you. If we are abased, we praise you. If we're rich, praise the Lord. If we're poor, hallelujah. If we're healthy, thank you, Jesus. But even in sickness, we will praise the name of Jesus. In everything, we'll give thanks. And we know that one day soon, Lord, the world wants to have its cake and eat it too now, but one day soon, Lord, you're going to give us the greatest reward that man has ever known. And Lord, we'll wait for that reward because while others are seeking gold, we'll walk on it. While others are wearing pearls, we'll open it as a gate. And while others are trying to build mansions on this planet, Lord, we don't even need a mansion. We'll be in the presence of Almighty God. We long to see your face. Even so, come Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.